Hey there hunters, so in today's video we're going to do something I don't often do, which is just commentary. Today I want to talk about Wild Hearts, since I did put several hundred hours into the game, and if you're unaware, it recently got revealed that Wild Hearts was dropped by EA and is pretty much dead. And now while EA and Omega Force haven't officially announced the end of support for Wild Hearts, an apparent mod on the Wild Hearts Discord who has connections said it's pretty much game over. I'd kind of figured that this was going to be the case because in the beginning we had frequent updates but then it kind of like hard stopped, but we haven't really heard anything for the past two months, until we got this recent post on the reddit from the supposed mod basically saying it's dead. So regardless of it being officially dead or not, today I'm going to discuss Wild Hearts, what I liked about it, where it went wrong, and kind of what I hope happens in the future. So if you want to hang out, by all means let's do this. So I'm going to start at the beginning, when Wild Hearts was first revealed, and honestly it didn't give us much to go on. We had a pretty standard cinematic trailer with like a few seconds of some gameplay thrown in. It was pretty obvious immediately that it was going to be like a big monster hunting game, which isn't too surprising because Omega Force also did the Tweakoden, 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 Tweak, whatever games along like a long time ago, which were other giant monster hunting games. Anyway, back to Wild Hearts though. The reveal trailer was interesting to say the least. The biggest and first point of scrutiny for Wild Hearts came in that first trailer, and that was the showcase of the Karakuri crafting. While everyone, myself included, loves the idea of a new game stepping into the ring with Monster Hunter, the only thing that people saw when the Karakuri was shown was Fortnite, and of course comparing anything to Fortnite is never a good thing apparently. The main reason why Dauntless was so heavily criticized was not because of its poor hitboxes or cash shop or poor management and battle passes, but it was just because it looked like Fortnite so no one took it seriously. Being on the Epic Games Store didn't help it there either. Wait, Wild Hearts is on the EA launcher? It's on the Steam though, right? No, it's still on EA? Okay, we'll talk about that in a minute. But yeah, Fortnite, bad for hunting games. Now personally, I don't know why everyone crapped on Wild Hearts strictly for this building system. That's some lowest common denominator shit right there. I get that the building process looked like Fortnite crafting, but in the end, you're just building the same traps and bombs and shit that you could use in Monster Hunter, but rather than cycling through an item bar that we've been doing for 20 years, you just build it in a certain way. And so that was never an issue for me, it looked fine, but a lot of people refused to touch Wild Hearts because of this, and just this. And that was all I could see when people were talking about Wild Hearts so, you know, for the longest time before launch, it was just like, oh, Fortnite clone, Fortnite Monster Hunter, all that same shit. I personally saw Bo and was like, okay, yeah, I'm interested. But again, a lot of people just kind of sat with this impression of, oh look, EA game looks like Fortnite, EA plus Fortnite equals bad Monster Hunter game. Pretty much forever. Which wasn't exactly a good start for the public reception of Wild Hearts, though none of that was really on the fault of the marketing team. Now the next bit of Wild Hearts news we got was that 7 minutes gameplay trailer which was supposed to put like all the doubts to rest and be like, oh look, it's a real game with real gameplay. And while most of the video looked incredibly scripted with some cinema magic, it did at least capture what the gameplay loop was going to look like, and this is kind of where I got sold on the game, because, well there was a gun, but most importantly because it was exactly what I expected. It was very much what I wanted in a game. It looked like Monster Hunter, and a lot of the same mechanics in Monster Hunter, with like heart breaks and tremors and roars, and what appeared to be a good set of unique weapons to learn. So again, sold on the game 100%. Looking back on it now though, the writing was on the wall for Wild Hearts as they really did not want to show any raw unedited gameplay, and there would never be like a demo or public test or anything through the buildup of the game, leaving myself and a lot of other people worried about how the game would actually play since of course we didn't have much to go off of and they were demanding $70 for this game, though in early access with pre-ordering, while it was coming to Game Pass for obviously cheaper, they would get the game 3 days later. But this was kind of like the reoccurring problem with all the marketing hype behind Wild Hearts leading up to its launch. All the new trailers, including the ones at the Video Game Awards, was just some cinematic lore and info with very little actual gameplay ever getting shown. So they didn't do themselves any favors, as there was just huge, thick cloud of skepticism around the game. But before launch, we actually did get one good video drop that kind of showed what Wild Hearts was going to be like, which was that Golden Tempest gameplay video. This was, again in hindsight, a really bad gameplay video to put out. Much of the players seem to be like randomly building things, getting hit, not knowing what to do, and really just didn't highlight or showcase much of the game besides like the movesets of the Golden Tempest, which I guess was the point. And look, no hate to any of the players in the video or anything, I've seen what Capcom puts out for Monster Hunter and they're no ace hunters. So take it with a grain of salt. 
But the real problem here is that this video came out just before launch and the audience was looking for some actual solid gameplay to hook them in before deciding on their purchase. And this is what they saw. And it's like the only actual marketed gameplay video for them, and it was pretty bad. There was nothing to hype up, no crazy cool cinematic moments in a fight or anything. It just looked kind of boring, I guess. And again, I was already sold on the game because gun and hunting, so I was going to give it a go. But after I saw like the trailers, I was definitely going to wait for like Game Pass to play it because I was not inspired. But luckily, I did get a review code, so I didn't have to actually wait. So let's fast forward a little bit to the launch date, you know, the three days before Normie access at least. Launch was obviously not good, putting it mildly. Wild Hearts was immediately plagued with a large amount of performance issues from every angle. Process blocking bugs, preventing people from actually getting into the town to progress. Crashes, low frame rate, bad collision, just about anything and everything you can think of, it was there. Wild Hearts reviews were mostly optimistic about the game, saying that the gameplay is good and the appeal is definitely there, but the performance issues and just the technicality of it just killed the entire thing. This includes performance on consoles being almost unplayable at launch, which prompted a lot of people to refund the game immediately and just drop it. And PC wasn't faring any better though. Wild Hearts, despite being sold on Steam and other platforms, still required players to go through EA's launcher to play the game. And the EA launcher, which also managed your save files for like the cross save features and stuff, often failed to save your game and you just lose countless of hours. Like that was tons of people who lost all their saves and it was just another brick wall to prevent anyone from actually enjoying the game and even if you could progress and maintain your save the performance issues and crashes often force players to just put the game down regardless and i'd like to blame denubo again for that part of wild hearts just with all the day one issues because i know ea demands all games run denubo these days but also because there was a cracked version of wild hearts that dropped a few days after launch which when i tried it played significantly better than the actual game not perfect, mind you, because the game was still poorly optimized, but I was averaging about 10 more frames per second, which is a fairly significant like amount just for removing Denubo. It was clear that the performance issues were going to be the biggest problem plaguing this game and would need to be fixed ASAP to hopefully bring in some new players, but honestly, the damage was done. All the press headlines and stuff all said the exact same thing. You Google Wild Hearts right now, it's just going to say performance problems. And while I've been mostly doom and gloom in this video, I do now want to talk about my experiences at launch and beyond with Wild Hearts, because of course, everyone had different experiences with the game, and I can't say I had a bad one. I put a lot of content out for this game, and I played Wild Hearts for almost 400 hours, which I obviously wouldn't do if I disliked the game. So let's ride that rainbow and talk about what I actually enjoyed about the game. Wild Hearts was very unique in my opinion. While the core gameplay played like any other hunting game, that's not immediately a turnoff. Look at any of the Souls likes that are coming out. They all play exactly the same way, but that doesn't mean they're uninspired or bad games. You just need to find what makes your game unique and make sure the gameplay is good. And I have to say, Wild Hearts gameplay was good when it worked. Huge caveat there, which again, I'll cover in a minute. Wild Hearts had a few unique systems that I very, very much enjoyed. And one of those is definitely the highly criticized Karakuri system. Now when I first started to play Wild Hearts, I was going in with the mindset of, oh, I don't need Karakuri, I'm only going to use my weapon, TA rules, all that shit. And that doesn't work. But the more I played and learned about the systems, the more I enjoyed weaving the Karakuri system into the weapons gameplay. And I found that I really liked the whole gameplay loop that Omega Force was going for. You could use Karakuri crafting for anything from barricades, to ranged attacks, to walls, for spacing, climbing on monsters, and it was just a fresh take on the whole combat loop and I kind of fell in love with it immediately. The other key feature that I loved about Wild Hearts was their maps. Oh my god, I love the maps, and I want every hunting game to have similar style maps. It would just it goes hand in hand with the card curry system, but being able to just craft anything, make fast travel points, and really customize the layout of your map was really cool, and just made me approach the game in different ways that Monster Hunter really doesn't. I would need to learn where the monsters sleep, retreat to, change zones at, and plan my routes accordingly set up where like the zip lines and shortcuts are going to be, like springs and to climb up walls, all that stuff. And all your contracts stayed on your map so you could just really make your map your own. And you can also join your friends and hunts and stuff and see their maps and just get like, you know, fresh ideas on how people were laying out their stuff. And of course, people were building all sorts of wacky things, but it was just cool to see like different perspectives on how to manage your map because everyone had those different setups. While there are other features about Wild Hearts that I did like, such as almost all the kimono encounters and the endgame loop and crossplay, the Karakuri and the maps were definitely my favorite. Wild Hearts unfortunately had issues in pretty much all their systems though, be it bugs, imbalance, missing features, and just time wasting. 
but most of that is pretty much personal complaints because I just didn't agree with a lot of the design decisions in certain systems and mechanics, mostly around the weapons. But I stand by my earlier remark of when it's good, it's great. And when it doesn't, it's bad. Because Wild Hearts always seems to walk that tightrope of it's awesome, but it's also frustrating. As an example, while fixed now, for the first several months of the game's life, monsters would change zones very often because their transition was based upon their HP. So you're almost guaranteed to chase a monster through three or four zones and chasing it around the entire flipping map, causing you to chase the monster more than actually fight them, and nobody liked that. So fights would always boil down to either killing it before it could leave, given the birth to the zero second clear time meta, and the constant raging of you chasing after the monster because it walked away from your trap or breathed on your Karakuri contraptions, causing you to fail to make your harpoon or something. And now you just have to chase the monster for two minutes. This gave players a lot of downtime to think about the game and look at the environments, the frame rate, performance issues, and their car curry, which personally at least, often left me annoyed with the game as I ran to chase on my target. You don't want that downtime where you have to actually take everything in. I feel like that's a bad thing. The car curry, while I loved it, was also a system that was very inconsistent at times, causing great frustration amongst players, myself included. It was very finicky on where you could actually build, not on rocks, not on sloped terrains, or anything that wasn't perfectly flat, and often snap pieces into the wrong areas depending on the camera angle you were at, causing you to waste your threads and fail building, which often resulted in your death, because the fights in Wild Hearts often require you to build structures to stop certain monsters' attacks in a very timely manner, and make your openings to get your own attacks in. So when the Karakuri system failed you, the entire gameplay loop got shut down. And this is the dance that I've talked about a lot. When Karakuri works, Everything's great, everything's fun, and the encounters are actually feeling pretty awesome. Because I love the fights in Wild Hearts a lot, I really do, they're great. But when I'm constantly getting knocked around and killed because a rock stopped me from building, I just can't help but rage a little bit, a lot of it actually. And while this is all anecdotal experiences, trust me, I've talked with a lot of people about Wild Hearts, and the sentiments were shared across the board. Now going back to the performance issues, honestly, I never have very many issues with Wild Hearts, and I wish I knew why. I always had a lot of people on stream ask me for my specs or how it was running so well because for the most part, I was just running a solid 55-75 frames through pretty much all the fights, with some minor stutters here and there, a little annoying but not enough to ruin the experience for me. I didn't have to do any crazy modding or setting tweaks or anything like that, I was just running a standard 3070, which is a good card, but it's not like crazy. So my experience with the game was pretty good and I wish everyone had the same good time that I did. I genuinely don't know why its scale was, you know, playing pretty good to downright unplayable, depending on your hardware. And after launch, of course, the priority was to get the performance fixes out. So every week for like the first few months, we were getting big new performance updates and fixes, which ended up not really doing much. I like, I always ran the game decently and never saw any better performance with any of the updates. And pretty much everyone I talked to said the same thing, good or bad. It was always, I don't see any changes which is a huge nail in the coffin to Wild Hearts as the players who wanted to play the game were waiting for the performance boost and they never got those updates and they just, they were never able to play the game well enough. So they kind of gave up on the game after a few weeks and I really don't blame them. But personally, with the updates, I really liked where they were going. For the first few months, we were getting updates every week with plenty of content, new kimono variants, which I adored as all the fights felt very new, not just reskins new equipment, new systems that overhauled all the weapon crafting, new talismans, talismans farming, all sorts of good quality of life changes. Like really, I thought we were going to be living good for a long time. And I was really excited because I had hoped that eventually the game would have that big redemption arc that people would clamor about, you know, something akin to like Final Fantasy XIV or No Man's Sky. Unfortunately, we never got that. And the update slowed down and stopped in June, maybe, maybe July, just like four or five months after launch. We haven't heard anything about the game since early July. And now we're in September with the note that the game has dropped, which, you know, by now we could have theorized. We had updates, you know, every week and now silence for two months. It kind of is a telltale sign when the dev team was so openly communicative before. But it's also not surprising, as everyone knows, by now the game really didn't restore itself in the public eye. And most people just see that its performance was left in pretty much the same state it launched at. I'm sad because I really enjoyed my time with Wild Hearts, and I'm more bummed because not many other people actually got to enjoy the game as I had due to their performance issues, bugs, inconsistencies, safe corruption, any other medley of problems the game had. And I felt like the game had solid bones and could become a great title with enough polish, 
And for a while, it looked like that may have been the case, and because as I mentioned, the content updates were good. But unfortunately, the performance issues were never solved. And I think that a part of the problem was that the performance issues couldn't be solved. And so it was scrapped. But that's just my personal thought. But really, I think that Wild Hearts was doomed from the beginning, unfortunately. It felt like no outside feedback went to the game during development, and there was no gameplay demos or much gameplay before launch. Despite the dev team making great strides into taking community feedback into heart post-launch, their performance problems paired with being attached to the EA launcher didn't help it at all on the PC either. And through the months after launch, the performance issues just never got resolved. So with all the negative perception at launch, and nothing to redeem it post-launch, the writing was on the wall. And I wanted to make this video because I want to remember Wild Hearts fondly, but also I completely understand all the headlines about how bad the game is and nobody wanted to give it a chance. I just hope that through all this, Omega Force isn't discouraged from making another like tweak it in game or just another hunting genre game. I feel like there's a lot of good concepts and innovations that Wild Heart really brought to the table, and I hope this is more of a learning experience to take on to their next endeavor. And I would prefer them do that rather than waste the resources on developing Wild Hearts further if they know that ultimately it won't become what they want it to be. So I hope we hear something new from Omega Force that isn't Dynasty Warriors sometime in the future and would gladly pick up their next hunting game. But I mean, who am I kidding? I'm going to pick up every hunting game. Um, but that's going to be all for me. Thank you all for watching and good luck out there, hunters.